All right, we're here at the Elecraft booth with uh, our friend Eric, and Eric's going to go over a few things in their product line, kind of show us some of what's new and what's exciting with the Elecraft radios. Hi, I'm uh, Eric, WA6HHQ from uh, Elecraft. Wayne Burdick and I started, gosh, about 20 years ago now. And uh, we've got a complete line of uh, HF radios, amplifiers, uh, small antennas, you name it. So uh, the new stuff of the show, though, covers both ends of the spectrum from high power down to low power. So I'll show you doing two or three things here real quick. Okay. Uh, the first thing we brought out uh, and started shipping this year is our KPA 1500 amplifier. This is a solid state, very conservative 1500 watt plus amplifier that uh, uh, basically solid state transmit receive, works with any radio, not just our radios. Um, has a separate power supply you can see underneath it there, same size. Doesn't weigh a ton either. And compared to my old Alpha amplifier, this weighs about 34 pounds total with the two boxes. Great. So you can easily move it around, put the power supply on the floor, mm -hmm. and it's pretty deceptive. You don't even realize it's putting out power. And I have a question yeah. right off the bat. So you get the person that wants to buy that amplifier but says, hey, I have a 50 amp power supply sitting under there. Can they use a, sep a, a, a conventional power supply, or do they need to use that? No, one? you need to use this power supply. It's specific to the amplifier. It, okay. it supplies both. It's a three kilowatt plus power supply because your input power is always roughly double what yes. your output power is, um, and that's got a, a super high uh, reliability switching power supply. It's used for commercial server farms. Okay. That's then been even modified by us for quietness, both on fans and, and RF noise. So, so it doesn't. It's not just your average twelve volt power. No, supply. no, no, no. And it's, it's uh, yeah, it's about uh, you know. 50 plus volts at 63, 64 amps, and uh, gotcha. and also has some auxiliary supplies, some low current 12 volts and stuff to run the front panel and things like that. It's fully controlled by the on-off switch from the main main amplifier. Gotcha. But uh, this guy will work with any radio. It's got a frequency counter built into it and an auto tuner built into it at the full power output level. Oh, so wow. you can teach it your antenna. It has memories. It memorizes the tuner settings. And when you go back to that frequency, any radio talking to it is just PTT and RF. It'll go click and be on that set wow. that setting for that frequency. So it's a pretty cool amp. We've sold hundreds and hundreds of these here in the last six months since we got them out there. They're being used all over the place. They're, they're really what kind well. of drive to get full output does it require? Full output on this is drive uh, somewhere between uh, roughly 30 watts and wow. uh, and 60 watts on, as typical. That's, that's really conservative. And, and, that's it great. and it covers 160 meters through 6 meters. So oh, wow. up into the VHF band. So the moon bounce guys are using it. Um, of course, all the FT8 activity out there right now, digital modes, people are using these on FT8 on 6 meters, and it's opening the band when it normally wouldn't be open, so it's really interesting. Yeah, some cool stuff. Yeah, pretty cool. If you, uh, if you take a look, if you haven't already, this is the inside of the amplifier here, just so you can see the RF deck. It's uh, on the bottom side with the amp turned upside down. On the left side of the RF transistors, we're running two 1,400-watt transistors, or the two white ones on the left side. I'll point to it here, here, and here. And these guys are... Uh, Oh, each capable pretty much of putting 15, 14 to 1500 watts out. Mm -hmm. But the dissip heat dissipation level is 1400 watts a piece. Mm -hmm. So we've got 2800 watts of heat dissipation, which is almost double of what we need for this amplifier. Wow. Plus, we mount them to a copper heat spreader. You can see a little piece of it showing through between mm -hmm. the two. And they're actually okay. heat, they're, they're basically reflow soldered onto that. Mm -hmm. So they, they're very good bonded. And that's bonded to a huge heat sink that we cool with fans blowing from the back. Wow. And then the right side is the low pass filter pin diode TR network. There's no transmit receive relay, it's all solid state. Oh, so wow. it's silent when it's going between transmit and receive. Pretty cool stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. Very cool stuff. Very lightweight, very compact, and very cool looking. Yeah. I'm cool. trying to find a better word cool, than cool, cool, but cool. it's just the yeah. cool factor is cool. just so high. Oh, the fun factor. So That's right. um, we'll cover two other things here really quick. Okay. Um, coming over to my, um, my side here, I've got a complete remote station running of our K3 um, and a complete K-line system, which we'll show you in a second. Um, this lets me over the internet, basically with a small front panel that talks, basically this guy is just a small front panel of our K3 that no RF, we call it a K3-0 for no RF out, mm -hmm. and, but it's all the controls are the same, everything's the same for tuning the radio, but I'm controlling right now my home radio station in Aptos over okay. the internet. So this is going over USB for data and audio, mm -hmm. transmit receive, into any small laptop running Windows. We have free software available from a site called Remote Hams, or mm -hmm. remote with a H -A -M -S dot com mm -hmm. on the end. It's, and you can download it onto your Windows computer and, and get a client that you can listen to any, a number of radios that are free to listen to on the internet or mm -hmm. join a club and talk mm -hmm. through those. Okay. But, or if you ever want to control your own station like I am, you can privately just connect to your local internet address for your home house and you'll run another small laptop with a Another copy you can download of their software for a server side, mm -hmm. 
just hook up audio and, and control to your radio and it'll do everything. So I'm basically running that, plus I have a pan adapter from the, P3, uh, the P3 that we make, remoted also, so I can see that and even rotate my antenna. So That's very nice. I actually worked the de-expedition down on Ducey Island, VP6D, this morning from here at 10 o'clock, running my home station with the 1500 watt amplifier. And if you pan to your right, you'll see actually what I'm running at home right now, remote control. So if you look to see the, the radio station here that we've got on display, this is a complete K3S P3 pan adapter, KPA 500 amplifier, which I also have. And that, but right now I'm running the 1500 at home instead of the 500. So mm -hmm. you can see what that all looks like too. It's a very nice, very nice looking station. Yeah, this is our high end. Um, the K3 has been the top performer for the last you know uh, eight nine years out in the market. It's used by all the de-expeditions, including the guys I just talked to. All have K3s down there. So just to be clear, a person can buy just the K3 radio yeah. by itself. They don't need the external equipment. No, no. You can just add a piece at a time. Add a piece at a time. Okay. Yeah. That's our spousal theory of marketing. You can always work on those right. deal deals in the holidays or birthdays and so stuff. So you can too. buy yeah. your K3 by itself and then later on buy the, re the K3 the, the, the zero. Yep. Hook it up to your uh, laptop, yep. and you can be camping or at a hotel someplace. Oh yeah, operating your K3 from at any, home, yeah. anywhere. If you've got internet, if you got an internet connection, internet you connection. can do that. Yeah, very good. Let's uh, cruise over. I'll show you the other opposite end of the extreme okay. power wise. Let's do that. Let's walk over try. here. Okay. So I'm going to show you here. We have a couple of our smaller radios. These are great both for portable operation and for first time hams. We have our KX2, which is a small little guy here. That's a fully self-contained HF station. It covers basically from 80 meters to 10 meters, sideband, CW, and data. Even has built-in PSK31, so you can operate that with here. And that basically, with a small pack like this, we call it a, a KX2 a shack in a box. You know, you can have everything in a small bag. Right. Mm -hmm. You can basically go portable and have the station set up either with a wire antenna or the newest product is our AX1 antenna here. It's a little whip that works on 20 meters, uh, 15 meters, and 17 meters. We have an internal auto tuner, by the way, in the KX2 as an option. So you can set it up and tune that up real quick. This whole antenna, if I take it off here, you can unscrew this. I won't take the stand off the bottom, that comes off also. But the whole antenna breaks down to about a six inch package. With that, loading tube, take this off here, the whole thing fits inside the bag also. We have a little ground radial you can put on the radio with it and you can be on the air in five minutes. Yes, it's not as effective as a huge antenna, but with this on 20 meters with the tuner, we've got guys working all across the U.S., even in, into Europe from the East Coast or in the South Pacific. One of the guys was up on Donner's Summit yesterday hiking, sat down on top of a rock, threw up the antenna, threw out the wire, was working guys down in the South Pacific and all across the U.S., so pretty so cool stuff. If if a person chose to, they could take that and throw their dipole or a long wire antenna yeah, up in the, yeah, absolutely, yeah. On the tree. And this, and what bands does this one cover? This covers um, 100 and, oh, excuse me, 80 meters through 10 meters. Oh, so it's a full... It's a full uh, HF transceiver, full HF yeah. transceiver. It's about 10 watts, but you'd be surprised what you can do with a little antenna on 10 watts. Uh, certainly right. on CW and also data modes and, uh, and sideband. We have a little bit bigger brother called the KX3 here. We came out with first, actually. KX3 is the same display. You notice all our radios are using the K3 display on it. This runs 15 watts in the basic unit. We do have a 100 watt amplifier for it also, the KXPA100. We also have a pan adapter it adds onto it so you can visually see the band or decode data and everything else. This can be a home station for people, the whole setup. Some people have this as a 100 watt home station. I see. And they pick up the KX3 and go portable with it because it also has AA internal batteries so you can run it portable or 12 volt plugged in externally. Can we back up for one moment? Yeah, sure. KX2? Will it drive that amplifier? Absolutely. KX2 oh. or KX3 will hook up to the amp. Okay. So either unit will work with the 100 watt amplifier. Yeah. They'll work with the KPA 1500 too. They won't put out 1500 watts because we're limited by the FCC for how much gain the amp can have. Right. But they'll put out anywhere from two to 400 watts on the KPA 1500 or the KPA 500. Very good. Fun stuff. So that's a, that's a quick uh, synopsis of what we got there, but uh, right. it's fun that stuff. That was great. Eric, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, and I'm sure our viewers are going to find this very informative. Yeah, fantastic. Well, if they have any questions, check the okay. website out. Okay. Just go to ellacraft.com, and you can find out about our goodies and download manuals, look at reviews, you name it. Awesome. Hey, thanks a lot. Have a good day.